give a warm welcome to 75F founder and CEO, Deepender Singh. At 75F, we are known for having the most accurate and energy efficient sequences in the industry. For comfort, for being able to integrate and control any commercial HVAC equipment from any manufacturer, but also for our own hyper-engineered hardware and digital sensor networks. And the question we constantly get asked from the largest OEMs to the smallest quick-serve restaurants is how? How are you able to do this with such a small product line, wirelessly, and at such a low cost? Well, let me tell you the secret. The secret to everything that we do over here at 75F is data. We have spent hundreds of thousands of hours ensuring that our customer data is clean, rich, and reliable. That every piece of hardware carrying the 75F mark from the ground up is built to drive highly informed software. The next natural question isn't how 75F does it, but why? Let's take a look. You may not know what you're looking at here, but every 75F customer building in the world right now is sending enormous amounts of data to our cloud every 60 seconds. Some large customers are sending over a billion data points each and every day. With so much data coming in, it's imperative that we organize it, not to look good or make sense to humans, but to be useful to computers. And that's what we're doing here. But simply tagging and labeling data isn't enough. We also need to store it securely, configure it so users can analyze it meaningfully, and assemble it so control sequences can automatically optimize comfort and energy use. To accomplish this, our system creates a digital twin for every customer of every size at no additional cost, completely out of the box. In most organizations, creating these digital twins model is a manual process. And in this industry, manual really translates into inconsistent. What a nightmare for computers. That's why we built Haloft, the industry's only open source repository for digital twins and released it for free to the development community so their customers can benefit from it too. I keep bringing up this concept of data that is good for computers. That's because the future of smart buildings is less about data. Data itself adds no value to anyone. It's more about how buildings will use technology to adapt and respond to their owners and occupants. And as we have all learned this year, AIs will only ever be as smart or trustworthy as the data that they use. The data that we use at 75F is very smart and accurate indeed. So is your building. Beginning today, 75F customers can join a beta program for the first AI platform for buildings, Saffron AI. With Saffron AI, your office manager, facilities manager, technician, and analyst has a new assistant and a new way to get things done. I'm so excited to share more details about Saffron AI with you in the coming months. But today, I want to show you what it means. This venture of ours is deeply profound. We're moving away from the internet-based interaction that often raised eyebrows about the direction that AI is taking. This is about employing technology to make our buildings work in service of us, to deliver answers built on trust, to put the human at the center. Let me be clear, Saffron AI is for people, and we can't wait to show you what meaningful AI in buildings looks like. I'm gonna ask David to join me on stage. Dave. Thank you, Deep. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to log in here in a second and attempt to show you for the first time what talking directly to your building 
looks like, feels like. The office I'm going to use is R75F office for reasons that will become clear. But what you're about to see is what any facility manager or tenant, any owner or service manager will soon be able to experience. But first, I'd like for you to imagine what the future of building automation looks like. What words come to mind? Go on, speak up. Intelligent, yes. Powerful, connected, grid, grid connected. Efficient, yes. All of these are correct, of course. Or at least they're rational, educated guesses. And all of you in this room are going to decide with the choices you make in the weeks and months ahead, what this future looks like. But I'd like to mention three others. First, accessible. Over 90% of the world's commercial buildings have no building automation system today. Here in the US, the number's over 80%. In the future, every building needs to be powerful and connected, efficient, all the words you said, right? But for that to happen, installing and managing and maintaining buildings needs to be affordable, simple, easy to understand. That's why 75F automates buildings from a few hundred to millions of square feet. And that's why, thanks to Saffron, an AI is now available for all 75F customers worldwide in every building of every single size. And that brings us to scalable. The challenge with a lot of smart buildings today is it takes a lot of building smarts to make them work well. We all know there isn't enough building engineers to bridge the gap, but with an AI assistant in every building, a facilities manager can cover properties or other floors can step away without things falling apart, can go into a new space and quickly understand what's going on. Third, human-centric. The future of building automation isn't just one that's accessible and scalable, it's one that's driven by people. Discovering new savings, enabling new, more informed decisions, making it easier to make buildings great. AI isn't a chat bot or an app that's gonna make us slaves to screens. It's a tool, a platform, that when enabled, will allow those hardware and software interfaces to almost totally disappear. Imagine a push-to-talk microphone or app and not a thermostat. Imagine you don't go down and log into a server in the basement, but you check in and you make changes hands-free while waiting for a vendor to arrive, or getting the delivery of parts, or talking to a tenant. Imagine an AI for your HVAC equipment chained to the AI for your lighting system, for your elevators, for security, all seamless, all built around you, putting your comfort at the center. Saffron allows your building to work for you makes it easier for you to explore. What's my CO2? Is my firmware up to date? Analyze. What used more energy in March? And act. Plot my efficiency. Prep the conference room. But now, let's see what it looks like, what it feels like to have a conversation with the AI in your office, in your building, for the very first time with Saffron AI. Watch the screen. Good afternoon, it's great to finally talk to you. I say hi. I'm a new AI for your building. Your name is David. Would you like to give me a name? Sure, how's Ollie? Ollie, I like it. You can refer to me as Ollie from now on. How can I help you today? Is there an air quality alert tomorrow? No, but the outside air quality index here is expected to rise slightly to an AQI of 45. This may be cause for concern. Do you want to see or track current PM 2.5 indoor air quality? 
No, Ollie. Tell me if any zones go above recommended levels. I'll create an IAQ alert for you tomorrow. Is this correct? Yes. Thanks. Yes, incredible, right? But I know what you're thinking. This isn't real, right? This is just you playing a video. <clears throat> Wait one second. Let me share my screen. On the right, you'll see that this is the exact conversation I had with the AI in our building, Ollie, just a few days ago. This isn't something that's years from now or even months from now. This is the future of control today, live, right in Facilisite, 75F secure and roles-based platform. What you see is running off the real-time data stream and digital twin for our building, for our office, and in thousands of other buildings, from quick serve restaurants to sprawling campuses. So now, let's make the future of control real, right? Uh, I'm going to just type in here, and I'm going to ask a question. Um, I'm going to type, what's the IAQ right now? The IAQ is perfect. CO2 level is 651 parts per million. The building's comfort score is 97 out of 100. The AQI is 24, which is good, yeah. Um, I'm, I'll try, what's the occupancy of the seventh floor? What is the occupancy of the second floor? Only four zones are currently occupied. Let me show you. Here, it's switched to an occupancy map for the floor in our building. Yes, thank you. Incredible, right? Do you want to view occupancy over the last 24 hours on this floor? I'll type, no, Ali, period, thanks, period. All right. The AI in this building, what you just saw, we're not just predicting building use and preconditioning to save energy. We're predicting what I, the human in this case, might find useful, right? In other words, it's trying to help. Many competitors will talk about cleaning and enriching data, about the training time of differential AI or AI on the edge, but I'm gonna leave this site right now and I'm gonna access the AI for the first time in a completely different building. Let me do that for you here. Hello, it's great to finally talk to you. I just got a temperature alert on my phone. Let's try that. I got a temperature alert on my phone, period, okay. Yes, VV23. Okay, let's see. How many EV, no, EAVs on the floor? Fifty-four VAVs. Okay, that's quite a few. Where is the bad one? Yeah, why not? VV23 is in the northeast corner of the building. Okay. That helps. What do you think is wrong or what's happening? Question mark. It's probable that the reheat valve is stuck. A discharge air temperature sensor is at 66.23, but reheat command is set to 100. Yes, right? So this might indicate a reheat valve failure, of course. So I'm going to write, show me. It says, you can inspect or share data at the following read-only link. Incredible, right? So here is this other building, not Ollie. Not able to access any of Ollie's building data, 
but also powered by 75F and Saffron AI, giving me real-time access to data from any piece of equipment in my building connected in Facilisite. It's read-only, so I could share this with a technician or supervisor that isn't on site right now or maybe doesn't have access, and I could do it without the risk of creating pain, of sharing passwords, of building a new user in the system. Service teams will save truck rolls. Crews will have the right equipment. Starting today, your building intelligence will help people be more intelligent. That's our future of control. Fundamental to that, though, is communication. Not just communication as siloed as your data used to be, but communication in every language somebody walking through your doors might know. For this, I'm going to get a new building over here, and I'm also going to get someone who knows a lot about languages. Please welcome to the stage, John. Yes, thank you, John. I did. Thanks for offering to help. So you've never used a building AI, right? No. And what is your familiarity with commercial building HVAC systems? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> but you know a lot about languages, right? I do. And uh, can you tell these guys some of those languages that you happen to know? You're a polyglot, right? Uh, I guess you'd call it that. Yeah, I, of course, in addition to English, I grew up speaking Finnish. I've learned German, French, Spanish, some Swedish and Latin, <laughs> and Portuguese and Mandarin. That sounds like a, a whole lot of languages. Over eight, I think. I feel like I only speak hello in about five, confidently. Um, so what I'd like to do now, if I can, John, is show the power of technology that puts a human at the center. And okay. I'll ask for your help. If you could just come over here, um, you're going to touch this trackpad. You see that microphone icon? Yeah, I see it. OK, so I'd like for you to click that. OK. And I'd like for you to, to uh, say, what equipment am I connected to in French, if you can? Okay. Yeah, just right here. All right. À quel équipement suis connecté? Vous êtes connecté à 43 équipements dans votre bâtiment. And uh, it looks like 43? Yep, that's right. Okay. Um, can you ask it now the number of floors, but ask it in, in Portuguese? Okay. O meu prédio tem quantos andares? In seu edificio, a ueme total de tres andares. Awesome. I, I see a three there. Yeah. But if I was a tenant, an installer, a facilities engineer, say from Brazil, okay. and I was more comfortable in a language other than English, like you, we uh -huh. could keep going. But let's change this up. I'd like you to show how these technologies can speak to each user not just in their native tongue, but in the way that they want to be spoken to. Okay. Can you ask it to speak deferentially to you now, um, but in Mandarin? Do you know that word, deferentially? Okay. Yeah, deferentially. Okay. Ni nang gan hua gong jin de shuo hua ma? Shi da, xian shang, an zhao yi dao wu de biao zhun, ni xi wang wu ji yu shen me cheng du de zun zhong. What did it say? Uh, well, it, it definitely can, but I need to pick the level of deferential on a scale of one to five. Uh-huh. So I'd like for you to choose five, but do it in German, and then say, um, say what's wrong with my building? Can you do that? Oh, okay. Nummer fünf. Und was stimmt mit meinem Gebäude nicht? Basierend auf den verfügbaren Informationen scheint es derzeit keine Probleme mit ihrer Website zu geben. Der Online-Status der CCU-Geräte an ihrem wow, Standort so weist going. derzeit keine Probleme <laughs> auf. Darüber hinaus it's, gibt it's es an ihrem Standort insgesamt in drei Etagen, uh -huh, uh, 39 okay. Räume, 74 Geräteeinheiten und 292 Zonen. Gibt es etwas Spezielles, das ich bezüglich ihrer Website überprüfen oder ihnen helfen soll? It, it says everything's basically okay, and it 
wants to know if there's anything else it can help me with. Wow, that is a lot. OK, OK. Uh, we can keep going. But for the sake of everyone here, so they can follow along with you, I'd like for you to type in English, okay. if you can. Just I use can the keyboard that. here. All right. OK, say you're a facilities manager and you're texting during a meeting. OK. Um, type 17 November okay. 4 8 p.m. OK. 4 8 p.m. OK. Yeah. Perfect. OK, now 2 2 D E G. OK. Got it. Nice. OK, yes, sir. Do you want to change the desired temperature in this building from 24 to 22 degrees on Celsius? Perfect. OK, but now type no if you can, John. OK. Just no. All right. OK. Nice. Let's see what it says. My deepest apologies. <laughs> May I inquire as to what alterations you wish to make? Um, make it. 20 degrees. Can you type this? Make it 20 okay. degrees. All right. Not 22. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Perfect. Let's see. Absolutely, sir. Your command is my utmost priority. Wow. Uh, the very talented and now very expert at building automation, John. Thank you so much again, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let's give him a round of applause. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. And with that, now I'd like to introduce you to the head of the AI program here at 75F. The man responsible for everything you just saw, Madhu. Madhu, please come out. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Glad to be here. I want to start out by saying not too long ago, we were amazed that we could control the world around us by clicking a mouse or tapping a screen. This is particularly true in commercial buildings where tech hasn't caught up just yet. The idea that a facility manager can log on to a user portal and push a scheduled change to multiple buildings is still pretty cool. But today, I want to ask you to think beyond that idea. What comes next? We built Saffron AI to make complicated facets of facility management easier. And as Dave just showed you, I think we're close. Now, instead of searching support centers for reminders on how to adjust set points or what have you, you can just ask your building for help. And yet, we think even that isn't completely the answer to what's next. We believe that eventually, the BMS user interface as we know it today will disappear. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say I'm an energy manager, and my boss, the chief sustainability officer, wants a customized energy report on my building. I need to share building data with them in a consumable format. But that's all a little complicated for me. Let's draw it out and see if the AI in our building can help. First, I want to see a map of all my sites. Next, I want to see a breakdown of my energy usage, both gas and electric. Next, I want to see the average energy usage in electricity. I also want to see the average energy usage in gas. Lastly, I want to also compare the average energy used every week between this month and last month.
All right, let's take a picture, and I'm going to airdrop it onto my computer. I'm going to airdrop this onto my computer. Now I'm going to click accept. Drag this photo onto my desktop. I'm now going to open Portfolio Analytics Manager and drag and drop this image onto our AI chat. Generate a dashboard. I'm going to drag and drop my image. It's thinking. As you can see from the whiteboard sketch, the AI inferred the correct widgets and dropped them onto this dashboard. Building analytics and reporting is only as accurate as the data or as consistent as the analyst. Safra not only executes complex software workflows via a natural language interface, but it can see and understand how to turn sketches into shareable summaries. I'd now like to introduce Bob, from 75F to talk about the features of this AI platform. Bob? That was mind blowing. Thanks, Nadir. Okay, everyone. There's been a ton of information that has been conveyed today, but I'm here just to kind of quickly cover the features of the uh, Saffron AI, AI, AI platform and kind of give you some of the business values that are associated with them. So let's start off with those. Human in the loop is the first one. Now, contrary to where you may be thinking about AI, it's not to put you out of the loop, it's to put you in the loop. It is human-centric and it is for humans. And it makes things faster and easier for you to do your job. Built-in AI limits and handoffs. Now, you've probably used ChatGPT and maybe some other AIs, and what you found is that when they're talking about things that are on the web, um, they are very confident in lying to you. And that's because there's a lot of garbage on the web, right? So we avoid that completely by putting strict limits on what our AI is trained to do. We talked earlier about how clean the data is. When the data is clean, you'll get the truth. An auditable digital footprint. So sometimes when things don't go right, sometimes things might have proceeded in a little bit different way than you expected. What you need is an audit log, right? To go back in time and take a look at what happened. And of course, with Saffron AI, that's all built in. Zero training and compiling. Now, there was a party trick that was shown to you earlier today where Dave showed you about how an AI gave some answers on one building then he switched over to another building and got similar performance. That means that there was no training and no compiling necessary, and that all becomes possible because of the data and the cleanliness of data that Hayloft represents. Lower barriers to building expertise. So you could be an experienced facility manager, but your responsibilities have grown. You have way more buildings than you've ever had. Or you could be walking your building and not a facilities manager, but you're still responsible for it. Either way, the Saffron AI is going to help you along the way. Nowadays, it's very common that folks are responsible for managing their building, but they might just be an office manager, right? So Saffron AI enables everyone to get control of their buildings. AI enabled master BMS. Now, if you've heard the term master systems integration, and you have a portfolio, you're probably familiar with very large invoices. That's because the process for bringing multiple buildings together into a single user interface is extremely laborious. But not so with Hayloft and Saffron AI. 
you get access to an entire portfolio because of those clean data sets, and it makes that whole promise of portfolio-wide management possible. Fluent in 50 languages. So we have Facilisite, it's in English. We've been teaching people how to, how to use Facilisite, and we wish that we could localize it. We're operating in 15 different countries around the world. We haven't had time to do all that translation yet. But now with Saffron AI, that translation isn't even necessary anymore. Invest in a zero interface BMS. Have you ever heard that term? So we spent a lot of time training. I personally have met and talked with a lot of you in the past, um, teaching you how to use and make, manage your buildings with Facilisite. What if there was no interface at all? All you had to do is be able to articulate your need or articulate your problem or articulate your command in English or whatever language you choose, and that's what happens for you. That's what uh, the promise of Saffron AI is, the zero interface BMS. And whiteboard to dashboard. I am still amazed at what Madhu did just a minute ago. I've built a lot of dashboards for my customers over time. We take the time to figure out what the query should be, um, but just doing it on the whiteboard and having it show up on the dashboard is, is magic. And track problems before they occur. So this is all about saving time and money, right? We're talking about trust, we're talking about accuracy, and this is all coming from clean data. Um, that is uh, what our promise is with Saffron AI. Turn agents into actions. This is not a chat bot, right? You're not just having a conversation. You're actually accomplishing things. You're actually managing your building. You're optimizing, you're supporting, and you're controlling your building through the AI. Uh, during the course of this webcast, a bunch of questions have been coming in. They've been coming from the audience here. They've been coming from our online audience. Uh, Kelly in the studio has been uh, figuring out which ones are the best ones to be asking today. Uh, so let's, uh, let's hear a few of those. Now, I'm not gonna have time to answer all the questions. I've already been forewarned, but don't worry. Uh, during the follow-up, we'll answer all the questions that have come in. So look for an email follow-up with that. Uh, Kelly, can you start me off with the first one? Hi, Bob. Yes, okay, so the first question is, when is this available? When is this available? So, um, starting right now, select customers will be available for our beta program. Uh, so that's now. Uh, please get a hold of your territory sales manager and let them know that you're interested in joining our beta program and we'll get started. Okay, question number two. Um, it looks like, oh, this is nice. This looks great. I am imagining how to sell this to our building owners group. I already have thermostats though. Do I need to have 75F? So the good news is that you don't have to have 75F hardware in your building, but you do have to have Facilisite. That means that we have a data pump or um, some other type of uh, equipment that is integrating your building into Facilisite. So all customers that are using Facilisite are eligible for Saffron AI. Nice. Okay, third question. How much does this cost? All right, so the good news is that this is included in your building intelligence optimization service, your, bi your BIOS annual fees. And that is gonna hold true through the entirety of our beta program. Looks like we only have time for one more question, but this is a good one. Doesn't this just replace the facility manager? Ah, that is the key question. No, it doesn't. Of course, the AI is not gonna fix any leaky pipes. It's not gonna fix the equipment, um, but it is gonna make that facility manager far more efficient and able to cover a lot more problems because it's like the handy assistant that's keeping him informed about what's going on so that he knows what his priorities are and what he needs to get done today. All right, so that's the last of the questions that we can handle today. Uh, I just want the rest of my team to join us on the stage. 
Um, I'm just so proud of uh, the information that's been passed today. Um, Deep, Madhu, uh, Dave, come on up. Thank you, everyone, for coming over here. This has been years in the making. Uh, there's hundreds behind us that you don't really see. At 75F, we've always believed in non-linear solutions to harness the power of compute to solve the problems that we face. Thank you all for coming over here and being part of history. Let's get this done. Cheers. <laughs>